This week, three sides of the coin, I predict. Heads explode. We're going straight over the, the far wall in right field. This is a grand slam before you've even hit the play button. You had to hit the play button if you're hearing this. We call our shot. We call our shot on this one. And you're going to have to stay to the very end because we've got pictures of the Elder Tour stage. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of your three co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, joined by Tommy Summers and Mark Cicchini. Um, guys, I, I feel like screw any chat, any talk, unless Tommy, you got a really good comment or two to share because, nope. because our episode with Johnny Z is getting some massive love. Yeah, but it's all just like, thank you so much. This is wonderful. I, I love the mega force, uh, records and what a great interview. It, it's, it's a lot of that, which is wonderful, but there's not a lot of stuff, at least so far that's come in that's pondering or asking a question about one thing or another. Then just say hey a few times. You gotta you gotta earn your keep there, Summer. Yeah, we gotta we gotta <laughs> have you do something. Hey ho. Hey-ho. You know, so so segueing from Johnny Z who last week revealed a bit of unknown Ace Fraley minutia about his performance at Madison Square Garden, which basically ended his Seal relationship with Atlantic. Um, this week, O M G. I mean, seriously, we we hooked a big one this week. We are joined by Mark Ravitz. Now, you might know Mark's name from maybe related to the Destroyer stage, because he did design the Destroyer stage. He also designed a little thing called the very first Kiss logo. In concert. So he did those two things, and he's going to talk about them with us. But that's not really cool. The really cool stuff, are you sitting down, everybody? Please, sit down. He designed the stage for music from the Elder. You say, what stage? They never had one. Uh uh uh. They have a stage that was drawn, designed, and we have the sketches to show you. And the man who talks about the ideas behind this stage. You think that's cool? Uh uh uh. Did you know that the music from the Elder stage led to the Creatures of the Night stage? Why don't you just tell them everything? Yeah, well, they don't get all of these. They, 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 See, they, Mike, they, they so no, no, no. Here, here, here's the trick, guys. We've got photos, but you're gonna have to wait until after we interview Mark Ravitz, and then we're gonna show all of the photos. So listen to Mark, share his amazing holy shit moments. And then you're going to see some photos that are going to make you go, holy shit. And, and trust us, we're not just hyping this. All three of us, when we saw these photos earlier today, we were like, oh, my God. Mark is like. I knew on my sundial. Yeah, Mark is like, I will own these because they're all being <laughs> auctioned off later. I will month. own these. <laughs> That's Mr. Burns. <laughs> um, so I. I I, I kid you not. I mean, we went, I think all three of us went serious fanboy this week. Yeah. Not just Mark, not just me, all three of us, including Tommy. This was some really special stuff that Mark Rabbit shared with us. And I'm excited that I'll be able to go over to Mike's or Mark, Mark's house and see it. Oh, exactly. God, I Exactly. So where where exactly in your house is the Destroyer model going to go? You know, I, I've said this before on the show. This I'm in the KISS room, 
And this room is, it, as, as Liz always describes it, the room that threw up Kiss. And this is insane. It really is. It's insane. But it's all moved out to the main part of the basement, which is when people come down, they go, wow, this is incredible. I'm like, no, it's not the Kiss room. They're like, well, but it's all that's Kiss. That's just a little like, pre-spit out that's, there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the... Um, I that's, still, that, that's the dry so, the, anyways, the dry heaves are out there this is the real vomit but I did think um, I, if I get the thing that I want I, I have a place out there that I think it would oh it's not going to go it, like in the center of the dining room table no, no. <laughs> oh, I, I want to put it under on top of a lazy he, Susan so you can just t- Tommy he stopped it. and thought oh. about that for one second a split yeah, no. second he's like no I, I, uh, I, I, gotta, no. I tell you what the really quick um, speaking of tables how about coffee table books if you haven't ordered yours yes. from Nicholas. our good friend Nicholas this thing is freaking awesome, awesome. It, it, it really is second to none uh, super well done. Every superlative that you can, you know, that'll roll off your tongue that describes how something is great is in this book. So you need, this is one of the, put it this way, this one of those books you need. If you're a Kiss Geek, you need this. Yep. Um, I was honored. I was asked to help for a few things and uh, both my daughter and myself are listed in the, in the credits because my daughter was is able to take better photos than me. <laughs> oh, shocking. <laughs> Shocking! Yeah. So my, my, I remember I sent some my stuff. My cat to can take better photos. <laughs> He's like, "Can you get a grown up to take the pictures?" So, <laughs> <A> grown up. <laughs> so, so I call my my daughter downstairs, and she's like, "Okay, Dad, you know, you and your goofy hobby." So it's funny. I said to Nicholas, "I'm like, since Emily took the pictures, can you thank her in the book?" Too? He's like, "Of course I will." So it was cool though because it was a nice father daughter. My daughter and I are super close anyway. But I'm like, "Hey, Em, you're in the book," and she's like, "Woohoo!" She that was really cool. She's so like, "Woohoo!" Our okay, names who are, cares? Yeah. yeah well, no, she actually thought it was pretty cool. I mean, to have your name in a you know a book you can you know order online or from Amazon or from she's wherever. Like, but anyway. unfortunately, it's a kiss book. Yes, but <laughs> but I, I tell you what. Uh, again, you know, Nicholas uh, worked his butt off as well as his friend Joe did a great job. Um, you know, with this book, it's it's so well put together, and and the, the thing that I really like about it is that you know, much like the Kiss Alive Forever book, which which you know I still reference at time. This is something I'm going to be referencing because it's you know what I mean. It's there's stuff in here, not a ton, but enough that I'd never seen before, which kind of ties into this episode. That's another reason why I wanted to mention it. It's just great that in 2019, a grizzled old Kiss vet like me can go, hey, I didn't know that. Or I didn't see that before. And, uh, you know, there's a few things in that book that, you know, that uh, that Nicholas found. And, uh, and I remember, too, when he was doing the book, him you know, talking about, he's like, I couldn't believe, you know, I found this sort of thing. Did you even know about it? And I'm like, I heard about it, but I'd never seen it. He's like, oh, you know, it just, it's just cool again. Um, so if you get a chance, uh, hottest brand in the world, if you, if you watch this show, you we, guys know, we, all we, we've had him on, we've talked about it many times. It's done. But, uh, it's available. Again, it's just, shipping. You did a beautiful job. He's a good guy. Get yep. out there and, and get, get one for yourself. Yep. So, Michael and Tommy, without further ado, let it roll. Mark Rabbits, and we'll see you at the end with some very cool photos. Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. So everybody, I, I am beyond thrilled. We are beyond thrilled and excited to to introduce this guest this week. We yes, are we joined are. by Mark Rabbits. Um, Mark, thank you first of all for joining us. And and Kiss fans out there, if you know some bit of Kiss history, you might know Mark's name 
in relation to the destroyer stage, which is something we're going to talk about. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff, including, I, I don't know, for me it was, it was like a holy shit moment, pardon my French. Um, one of the items we're going to talk about later was just holy shit, I can't believe I'm looking at this stuff and seeing this. Um, Mark, why don't you go ahead and just give all of our listeners and viewers the, the two minute elevator pitch who you are and what you've done and why you ended up working with KISS. All right. Um, all right. So I'm a, uh, a native New Yorker and I've been uh, drawing and painting since I'm seven years old. And I wound up going to, uh, N well, I went to high school of music and art in New York. And then I went to uh, NYU School of the Arts for Theatrical Design, which is now called Tisch School of the Arts. So I'm the first full four-year graduating class. One of my teachers there was a uh, Tony Award-winning lighting designer by the name of Jules Fisher. And uh, after I graduated from, uh, from NYU, uh, Jules hired me to design the first tour of the rock opera Tommy. And, uh, and I also did the Playboy. My first job out of college was the Playboy Bunny of the Year show. So, um, you know, I'm not like a regular theatric or, you know, Broadway kind of designer. And uh, when this opportunity for Jules came up to uh, get involved with uh, uh, both uh, David Bowie and Kiss, uh, Kiss uh, came, uh, I, I believe, no, you know, I'm not sure which came first in that year of 1974, but, um, uh, you know, Jules needed a, a designer to uh, handle this uh, rock and roll thing that he wasn't very really uh, into or totally uh, fluent in. And, uh, you know, being a student, he knew me and uh, called me up. And uh, so I started uh, in on this uh, to, uh, you know, go see uh, Kiss to begin with, you know, check him out. You know, you know Bill Coin was the uh, manager at the time. And, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we got to know him, but I went to, uh, some of the clubs in Queens where they were first performing, uh, with, you know, some makeup on, uh, they didn't have a, a logo yet for their background, but they did have, uh, some, uh, idea or, or Ace had an idea for a, uh, a Kiss logo and, um, uh, so we, uh, we took it from there. I did their very first flash pots. I built their, uh, logo, uh, what is now in what is now my living room. Uh, um, and yeah, yeah. And I was stage when, uh, when, uh, Gene went on fire that first time when he was blowing the, uh, uh, the fire out of his mouth on the stage over there and at the Academy of Music and the Academy of Music actually, was three blocks from uh, where I grew up. I grew up on 11th Street and 2nd Avenue in Manhattan, and this is between uh, on 14th Street between uh, you know 3rd and 4th Avenue. So it was just a, a little walk away from me from where I grew up. Anyway, well, uh, let, let me let me ask you real real quick, Mark. So, being that you you said you're a native New Yorker, you grew up there. Were you aware of Kiss? Had had or were you a rock fan? Had you heard anything about this band before Jewel said, "Hey, you're going to go do something with them"? No, honestly, not. And uh, because they were, they were uh, honestly they were small potatoes at that point. Yep. And um, you know, nobody they were really forming. You know, they had formed you know initially and were doing clubs, but you know, they still didn't have uh, or their th total through line, if you will. And um, uh, so, uh, and, and l let me say this too. It's like there, there are like various you know bands and stuff. And I have to say, uh, after you know working with Kiss and stuff, I, I was surprised. I'm not really aware of any other bands that had makeup like this or even attempted to do any kind of makeup like this. There were some, you know, individuals uh, that have, you know, maybe used some makeup here and there, even including Bowie with Ziggy Stardust or whatever, but they didn't, you know, for me, this, this kiss that I was seeing and, and uh, you know, putting my two cents in in their formation was, 
it wasn't even so much for me as a uh, a band so much as an act and you know I, and, and so um you know i'm not going to think of kiss to go and and play like uh you know uh 50s rock and roll that i might want to hear but they you know they're presenting themselves and you know that's all good all i'm, not, all I'm saying is so they're they're bringing a whole different kind of thing to you know with music not exclusive music but something with music and something almost more entertaining than music itself or almost a three-dimensional mtv uh uh, video, uh, if you will, before MTV video was uh, really getting any foothold. And so, uh, you know, people like that. And uh, we're always looking at, and are always looking for something new and different. And, uh, and this was. So I knew we were on to that at that point, you know, even early on, this is different for sure. And um, uh, so that, you know, helped uh, me with my energy and then, uh, you know, built the, uh, the logo. And, and, in, and in rock and roll, once you get into a project, if you're into the rock and roll, then, uh, you know, that's your focus and everything else is secondary in life. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, that's true. You know, it, so that you know, so anyway, it's like you're gung ho for what you're doing, and uh, and that's all good energy. So that's uh, that's how I uh, was introduced to them. Uh, you know, I definitely uh, you know you know said, oh, you know, maybe a little more of this, a little less of this, or whatever that may be. Uh, and uh, uh, but um, but that's basically it. So when we got to the uh, academy uh, before the academy of music, we had a uh, a private night. Uh, like a press uh, release kind of night uh, uh, with the introduction of Casablanca Records being the new uh, record company for KISS. Uh, that was at the uh, f what was left of the Fillmore East. And so that was like a, a ghostly kind of environment. And uh, they, uh, it was an empty theater, uh, some ripped up seats, um, uh, and we came in uh, for KISS, that was like perfect, and uh, we put a big, uh, uh, you know, spider's web behind the, the band that would catch some ambient light and some, you know, light that was coming onto them, and the, you know, we had the logo, you know, finished by then, and bang, we were rock and rolling that night. Um, so that was did you did you design those things like I've seen the the drawings for those were, were, was that your handiwork or were you given you know like the blueprints for the web and for the the logo or, or was that your design well the uh, the web that's definitely my design there's like a sketch of that in one of the uh, uh, you know pictures or, or you know uh, frames that uh, or emails that Jacques sent you. And, uh, yeah, that's like the first one about the logo. So, uh, but the KISS logo, I did not design that. That's designed, or the, con let me put it this way, the concept for that came from Ace. Oh, oh that, that, that part we know, but what I was talking about was, you know, instead, like, like years on, as you know, when, when you were working on the Destroyer Tour, you know, the, the logo looked, the Alive logo, the logo from 74 and 75, was radically different from the one from 76 and 77. So my, my, what I'm asking you is um, that first logo that was made looks like the rhinestone-esque, um, you know, from the first record with the lights, you know, acting that's, as the rhinestone. That's, the, uh, it, that's totally it. It was like, you know, make that big, make the rhinestone logo big. Yeah, that's what I was getting. But... So that's what you were asked to do. Yeah, and and and, okay, then, and then you and then your your task is to is to figure out how to make that, how to build that, and and obviously create something that they looked at and said, yeah, that looks exactly like we envisioned in our heads. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean I'm, I'm not inventing it. Sure, that's sure. for sure. So yeah, so as a you know designer here, you know make this for me. Here's a, here's the logo. You know, make it three dimensional. Yeah, and that's what I did. Sure. Well, that that I leads me to another. I mean, Mark, that leads me to another. That leads me to another question. There's a very famous photo amongst Kiss geeks, and I want to say it's one of their first shows when they were in Edmonton, and and it's in one of the Kiss books where 
the logo was like each letter was hanging and it didn't look so well. Um, eventually that all got put on a, you know, like a riser on itself. Um, like, well, when, when, when they, uh, you know, that, that was the individual, uh, night of how that got hung, but they were all on a separate, you know, they were all separate. They were all, uh, like they were four feet high. They weren't huge and they were designed to hang off of one pipe. So if all everything is uh, on one pipe, uh, and the, all the lengths of, uh, you know, chain or cable or whatever, uh, were, uh, the same, you know, they should just all hang together neatly. I, I, I'm not aware of what the, you know, that particular picture, but, uh, it, 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 you know, I, I don't know the cause of that. It shouldn't have been. It was yeah, too easy. Well, I, I want to say it's the, one of the first nights they ever played. And in the photo, that's one of the things that sticks out about it. It's, I think, Mike and Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's the only, only photo like that where, yeah, you I know, think so. It, you know, the, 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 le the letters were, were at different, slightly off different heights because, yeah, you, to Mark's point, they were hung separately. And it sounds like probably what happened based on, on and our guest Mark commenting here is they didn't attach it to the pipe, which would have kept them all level right. and even. Because yeah, I think one, that's the only time that that happened. I mean, there's other circumstances. I, I, I'm, where they I'm set betting it that I'm betting that happened, and then after the show, Gene found the crew and said, "You're never doing that again because it looks terrible." Yeah, or or maybe you know, the, maybe if they were all off of one pipe, maybe the pipe wasn't level. Right. So that's one all thing all would those have possibilities. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't know, like where you know where that fell through so, the crack so, or what. So, so Mark, did you have? Were there any any um, difficulties or hurdles you ran into in transforming basically a drawing of the Kiss logo into a three dimensional four foot version? Um, no, I mean, and it wasn't even a drawing. They either gave me a. a I, I think it was. Uh, you know, may have been a uh, a rhinestone patch with that. You know, I, I you know the, I made the drawing. Nobody made the drawing. I, I made the drawing, but um, you know they gave me some sample of something. You know to say, you know this is the or it was probably maybe a photograph of a rhinestone patch or something like that. But that that's how it came. I mean, there was nothing you know you know intricate or mystical about it you know it was like you know, here's the logo and then you make it uh, 3d and and as you said that logo is in your living room right now no 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 i made it in my oh you made it i thought oh i'm sorry i thought you said it's still there no i don't have it and, and, <laughs> and, and i was like oh my god that's a collectible to be had <laughs> no no all right you made oh, it in your, i got it i, I got I, it I, I, you know, I helped build it myself. Sure. Um, so but. I don't know if there's anything more to really talk about, guys, about the logo, because it is what it is. It's just a great piece of history, the very first KISS logo. Yeah. I, I, I think, so So then, then let's kind of follow your timeline. You did that, did... And when that was done, were you basically done working with the band? And how did you come back into the picture with the Destroyer tour? Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, after this, uh, after the premiere, I'm not uh, at the Academy of Music. I'm not even sure if I, I worked another night with them there, even or after that. Uh, but okay, so now they're off on their own, and then. Um, uh, I get a call again from uh, Jules Fisher that uh, Bill O'Coin gets in touch with him and says they want to do a, a, a tour and, uh, you, know, you know, let's meet up or whatever. Now, this whole uh, Destroyer tour was put together uh, when Kiss, the band, was uh, in Europe touring, right? Okay. So they had no input into this. And when they came uh, to New York, back to, to the New York, and we went up uh, state to uh, Newburgh, New York, to Feller Studios uh, to see the set, you know, near near being finished of its construction, they were pissed. 
and uh, because they weren't uh, consulted about it. So they, it's like they, they as in was it just the four band members? Was it just Gene and Paul? No, I, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it was the four band members and Sean Delaney and Bill Coyne. I'm not sure if anybody else was there at that point. And and but. and so it was it was who exactly was pissed? Because I got to imagine at least Bill, band. Bill but, okay, the just band just the band members cuz Sean Sean and Bill I'm sure were in constant communication. Um perhaps but but Sean, you know, maybe he uh you know showed a little of the uh disdain for it, you know, maybe to you know back up the band or whatever, I don't know. But uh but you know they were all they were upset that they weren't included, and you know so I understand that. But what what was the, the only really negative thing about it was they came onto the sta- you know onto the stage, and the, you know this particular shop that built this they were building Broadway shows, they were building opera sets for Metropolitan Opera, they had some of the finest craftsmen in New York building this. And they came up on the stage, and it was especially in uh, Gene in uh, Paul's area down front, the love area that had all these. It was a bejeweled area down there, and uh, they they physically you know ripped part of that up just to like you know release uh, their uh, their distaste for it. And that was everybody just watched that, and it was just like every shaking their heads. Bill of Coin was shaking his head, and it was just it wasn't a pretty sight. Let me just say that. And uh, so that was that. Then they so from there we uh, regrouped and uh, added the uh, uh, breakaway uh, walls for the uh, city and stuff, or the. Uh, uh, you know the crumbling walls or whatever um uh you know down uh, left and right of the uh drum riser and um that's pretty much uh you know maybe retune the uh uh the jeweled area again and uh that's pretty much it most of the elements that we created as an in, as individual uh you know stylistic areas for each of the uh uh, characters, if you will, within Kiss, those were maintained, and because uh, they liked the design of all that, and uh, and we went forward with that. You know, you know, finish the uh, building, everything, rehearsal, and then the opening in uh, Norfolk, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, on uh, July 3rd, uh, with the uh, red, white, and blue lightning bolts uh, up above. For, I, know, have, for, I think it's one of the coolest stages I've ever seen. I didn't get the chance to see it in person, but it's interesting that you know they had such a reaction to it because from a fan's point of view, it seemed like it fit perfect because it was different than anything I'd ever seen before. You mean the Destroyer set? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. The, the bulk of it, they, uh, they accept it as uh, we like it. But because they weren't consulted at all, so, uh, so that, that I was going to ask you that. So their their anger was mainly the fact that they weren't consulted, not that they didn't like what they saw. It's just nobody my, talk, talked yeah. to them about it. Yeah, they they uh, like they didn't express anything towards me. You know, as a designer, they were expressing it more towards Bill uh, for not talking to them about it or asking them about it. So, and and, and we've we've got some images we're going to show of of some some drawings, some sketches, and of course, a a beautiful 3D model that was created. It 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 sounds like none of those uh, things were shown to the band in advance. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, the, uh, the model, definitely not. And, uh, you know, and uh, they were really like in the dark about it when, uh, you know, when they when they saw it and stuff. But, um, you know, that that model and, and all the design for me, the design of the lighting towers, uh, you know, that that came evolved uh, that evolved from uh, when I would uh, drive out of the city and go to uh, Jersey on the Jersey Turnpike. Not that I often do that, whatever, but, uh, you know, when I would. The uh, the electric, uh, you know, the, the towers that would hold up the electric lines had that kind of uh, shape, if you will. And uh, or at least it's not like a straight tower going up, like scaffolding, but tilts in. 
and uh, you know has like a uh, uh, sturdy kind of foundation kind of uh, stance to it, if you will. So I I took that as my uh, starting point and uh, expanded on that a bit, but you know use that as the lighting towers that for me really you know are a, a big key to this or the look of it, and then uh, you know creating the uh, character zones for each of the uh, characters. And uh, you know, and worked into that with the the tree and the uh, giant red spike for uh, you know for Gene and the space area for uh, Ace and uh, the stage uh, or the uh, drum riser with the uh, the cats uh, for uh, you know for uh, uh, for Peter and uh, you know in the love area for uh, Mr. Love uh, Paul. <laughs> the love area, I love that. <clears throat> Um, you know, as, as I'm looking at, at that model right now, it, and I'm looking at all the details, for the first time I just noticed that the internal grid structure on the lighting towers are the S's. Oh, uh, well, no, well, that may be in my design. I don't know if uh, they were to totally built like that. I, I should really look, look. But, you know, it's really not that. What it is is uh, when you build the stuff, you put something across to triangulate. You know, so that's what it is. No, I, I, <laughs> but and, in terms and, of and, way. <laughs> yeah, and, and looking at the, the live photos of the final stage, um, it doesn't look like it's there. But in, in your... Um, scale model in, the model, like, in yeah. the model yeah all of a sudden i'm like wow the internal beams of those towers are the kiss s's I yeah like, no, i never noticed you. that before yeah I, I never noticed it either and if i would have known it then i would have lit them up <laughs> hey mark i want to i want to touch on something about, because you said how upset the band was you know when they were tearing up parts of the stage um in my and sharing a because Jacques, my friend, is, is as well. He was telling me a story that Peter kind of, I don't know, maybe was a bit of a voice of reason in this story. Can you can you elaborate a, a bit on what Peter's reaction was to the new stage? You know, I don't know so much about Peter's reaction to the stage, but Peter's reaction to being in Kiss, period. When we, you know, everybody was first getting together and getting to know each other, really, uh, he was like, uh, he, he'd been rock and rolling for a while. This was a big uh, break for him. He he saw the, uh, you know, the opportunity here, and uh, he did not want to mess this up. You know, this was like a big opportunity for him, and uh, he was like uh, just real serious about it, and uh, you know, was one of those. You know, that was the kind of energy that I saw him bring to all this. Now, you know, other, you know, uh, you know, I, I, from what I understand, you know, as time evolved and their incarnation, various incarnations of Kiss evolved, you know, over many years, uh, you know, things, uh, you know, changed uh, for Peter and his perspective changed and, you know, life changes and, and fame changes you and stuff. So, you know, I, I can't, re I, I don't know him beyond you know, my last meeting with him, seeing him, and that would have been in uh, the uh, Destroyer tour, and he was still their drummer, and he was still good energy for them, and uh, everybody loved each other then. <laughs> and, uh, well, and you know, I w that's exactly why I wanted you to, to elaborate a little bit on that, because especially in Kistory now, as it's told, and I, I know Mike and Tommy would back me up here, you hear just so much about Peter's, you know, the Ayatollah Criscola and, you know, just the bad things. But there was a time when, and, and you lived it, Mark, you lived it. And, and that's what I wanted you to elaborate, what you just did, is that he was a positive force. He did really? see the, you know, the good in all this. And, and you know, there, like you I loved I loved your term, Mark, where you said the positive energy that he, he brought yeah. at the time. Well, it's like you know, you 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 see it, and you know it. The Paul and Gene are in essence the spokesmen for the band, right? If you will, I mean, and and, and the leaders of the band. So you know, so Peter and Ace, uh, you know, they stayed in the background, whether that was intentional or not, or I don't know what the dynamics were, uh, you know, within the band about that or the business of it about that. But uh, you know, uh, you know, they stayed in the background. But but uh, but Peter, he maintained his end of it, 
and uh, you know was uh, you know happy to be there at that time with uh, you know always good energy that I saw. I, I want to ask you because you just I, I, I always loved this stage. How did you come up with the idea? I mean, I know that Peter was the cat and all that, but I, I that's one of the things on the current tour, and I don't know if you know anything about this, on the current KISS tour where the end of the road, what they're doing in 2019, they brought Sam the Serpent from, you know, the Love Gun Alive 2 era uh, back to the stage. And one of the things I was really hoping to see during this end of the road tour in 2019 was the return of the cats. Cause I always thought that was really cool. Just picking your brain when you were, d- when you were drawing the drum riser, what made you think of that or in that form? You know what I mean? Cause obviously, you know, when the riser went up, uh, you designed the big cat, you know, uh, on the banner that went, you know, underneath the drum riser and stuff. Right. Uh, um, by the way, I love the one from, from destroyer. I, that, that single, head is just so freaking cool but if could you elaborate or do you even recall how you got the idea for putting the giant cats on either side of the kit um well uh okay so you know peter is a cat to begin with and uh so i think i was probably looking at uh egyptian history and uh looking at some of those kind of uh image images uh from that and, uh, you know, just, you know, one thing led to another in my head and, uh, you know, uh, you know, put them there, I guess. I, 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 I don't recall totally other than the, to extend the image of uh, the cat. And um, uh, so I drew them up. Uh, uh, we hired a uh, sculptress to uh, make them, uh, you know, full size. Uh, they were first made out of a material called celastic, which you uh, dip in acetone and it hardens. So she made a uh, giant uh, um, uh, clay uh, figure and then uh, uh, covered them in celastic, cut them away, and uh, made another one, and that was it. But that's that's how they were made and then uh, sprayed up black. Cool, cool. I, I didn't know if that came from a, you saw a, a statue or something. But, you know, come to think of it, they do have sh- some sharper images. I can see a bit of that Egyptian feel, what you're, what you're talking yeah, about. If you, yeah, if you, you know, that's, that's where the, uh, my, my primary, uh, you know, thought came from. You know, I'm sure they get uh, massaged a little here and there, and when somebody else, you know, has some sculpture to it, their own hand, uh, hand work, you know, it changes a bit. But that was the definite thrust of it. And, uh, yeah, they were fun. They were definitely fun. Mark, how much um, direction or, or um, guiding guidelines did Bill and or Sean give you in advance of creating the Destroyer stage? And to go along with that, did you know the imagery of the album cover yet? Did you know song titles, lyrics yet? Did you have any of that to help you? No, I didn't know any of that. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I generally, you know, make, uh, you know, notes and thumbnails or whatever. And uh, I would imagine that process, uh, process went the same as, as I normally would and, you know, bring those uh, to a meeting with, uh, you know, Bill. I don't even think uh, Sean was in any of this and uh, probably with Jules and Bill, really. And, uh, you know, talked it over, you know, hashed out this, you know, this works better for this, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure totally if, if Bill came up with the idea of separate character areas or I did. I, I just don't recall, honestly. And, uh, but, you know, it made total sense. And, uh, uh, and uh, that's how we proceeded. Now, so it- you know, it's like, well, you know, doing doing theater, that's like a, a group effort. And, uh, you know, some people have a bigger voice in it or, not, you know, et cetera. But it's always, you know, somebody will throw in their two cents about something and it becomes, a, you know, a three-dimensional. And, you know, and then a lot of other ideas by uh, somebody uh, will just, you know, dissipate into nothing. You so, just keep building. Yeah, yeah, that's it, honestly. Um, I wanted to ask a question, and this might all be rumor, and for all those of you who know the answer to this, please don't ream me for asking it, but was there a failed um, 
pyro or a failed effect with this stage regarding some type of a lightning strike? Hmm. I'm not aware of it. I, you know, I am aware of various, uh, you know, the, the, they were looking for a lot of, they're always looking for effects. Yeah. And, you know, some work better than others. And uh, so I'm not aware of any, although I've heard, you know, you know, I heard, oh, this didn't work or that didn't work. But, uh, but that's the name of the game. Some work better than others and some uh, don't. Okay. Um, Mark, in, in amongst the images that Jacques sent us, um, especially images for the Destroyer Tour, I'm just noticing now a blue pen sketch of a stage on white ruled paper. And it's got the candelabras on it. And, and I'm almost wondering, um, obviously that's not related to the Destroyer Tour, but did you design the stage that they had with the candelabras? Um, I didn't design a particular stage that had candelabras. No. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I mean, if if that was uh, the candelabras are a major part of the stage or whatever, I didn't, dis I didn't design that. I never had any. I, I personally never had any candelabras for them. Now, once they had the stage. They would bring, you know, new things to it and try new things out. That's theirs to do with, you know, in their world up on the stage as sure. they want to do, right? So once I left the tour, uh, that was it. So after I, you know, I left, I left the night of July 3rd, and uh, what they did after that, uh, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, I didn't see them again until uh, uh, probably Madison Square Garden. Well, and, and I think what, what um, Michael is referring to, Mark, is the the sketch he's discussing from our perspective, just as fans, almost looks like the Alive stage, yeah. like it was pre Destroyer. It, it, I think I think Jacques mixed the image in with the Destroyer stuff he sent us, and it looks like, as to Tommy's point, the Alive stage where Kiss had candelabras on the stage. This goes back closer to when you designed the KISS logo. Um, do you recall which, having any involvement in, in an earlier stage? No, but which, uh, I mean, Jacques sent a few uh, you know, emails today with that information, or you know, various pictures. Which one was it? Um, what, it, it it's in um, a bunch of... Mine was. Um, it, it's numbered 67C.jpg. And it's with a group of photos of the live destroyer stage. But, but, but that he sent this that, morning. That, what? that he sent this morning, yeah. What time was that email? Oh, um, here, let me see if I can find it. That would have been... Give me one second here as I'm stalling for time, as I'm searching, <laughs> searching, searching, destroyer stage part... To come on, let's see here. Sixty. So it would have been. He sent it five fifty-five, five fifty-five a.m. Yeah, but that's been, which would have been uh, eight fifty-five Cal or New York time. No, no, but it's uh, with uh, the Kiss Destroyer tour stuff. Yeah, that was in two parts. Yes, it's in Des Destroyer Stage Part 2. Looking at it, I don't see it. Um, yeah, it's it's in the email, 1976 Destroyer Stage Part 2, and it's the image 67C that he attached. And like I said, it just looks like, I mean, it looks like a legitimate image. It just obviously is not part of the Destroyer Stage. It's earlier in their career. I don't. Uh, I don't see it. Mm, maybe maybe we've discovered a little bit of uh, rarity here that 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 Jock sent over. All right. Well, that that that's fine. I, so, I have that too. I mean, yeah, I would have that in the email, but I, I don't see it in the in the number two email for the stage. Let me look at number one. I, Num I, the number one email just had the model. Yeah, it's just model. Yeah, I don't see it on number two at all. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I'll ask Jacques about it when we're done here, what he knows okay. about it. Yeah. Hey, you know, Mark, I, I got another speaking. Uh, we were talking about the candelabra and stuff and them, you know, generally, you know, not being happy with certain aspects. I would have assumed that the first time Gene saw his castle, he would have been like a kid in a candy store. I mean, uh, do you have any recollections of him seeing his, you know, blood castle for the first time? Because, boy, that to me would seem like that was right up his alley. Yeah, no, he you know, he definitely used it. He he didn't really express any uh, anything uh, you know like you know wowie zowie about it or whatever. But uh, you know, it's almost like for me when when he uh, you know didn't complain, that was good. <laughs> exactly. That <laughs> no news is no news is good news, news when it comes good to news, it. right? <laughs> yeah, because you know if you think about it though. You know, early on, he did the candelabra, and that was his side, and that was supposed to, you know, invoke a little bit of almost Dracula. Matter of fact, I, I, Dracula was on TV the other night, and uh, it was the first thing I zoomed in on, you know, when he was in this castle was the candelabra. I'm like, you know, you could see a young Gene going, hey, I'm going to take that at some point, you know, to, to build some uh, right. some mood. But, man, I remember the first time seeing, you know, pictures of the Destroyer tour. And just how freaking cool it looked, you know, because it, it really that out of out of all the other stages really captured the vampire sort of, you know, motif more than anything else. Because think about it, you know, and that's the odd part about the Destroyer tour. It, it didn't it didn't last long. You know, they only used that stage for a few months and that was it. And by the time, you know. Because that started, what, in July of 76? July 3rd, yep. Yeah, by the time the Rock and Rollover Tour started, it was stripped down. You know, a lot of that stuff was gone. You know, they right. had the stairs in there. I mean, it really did, you know, they really did strip a lot of things back. And I don't know, man. I, I The Destroyer Tour, be, whenever you get to see photos of it, again, just because they're, it didn't last all that long. There's not a ton of them. And I thought that that you know what you designed really captured the spirit and imagination of the band. Um, one more comment on the Destroyer stage. One of the things that I've read in uh, you know all my uh, research on Kiss and reading about them is that the Destroyer stage, though they were upset because the lighting was behind them. There, you know, it was kind of dark on stage. Um, did do you have any comments about that, or did you remember any? conversations about the stage not being lit up well enough um not really i mean i i wasn't aware that it wasn't lit up well enough at all i think they you know i, I thought they, they looked good for what they were doing and uh you know we had top professionals lighting them uh, they're not going to have their work uh looking bad so i'm not uh you know that, that's a subjective point of view i you know i uh it didn't look bad to me. No, no, no. I'm not saying it did, and I certainly agree with you. I th again, I, I sing its praises. But I have read that when that tour started, some of the the people um, in the production thought it wasn't well. It was too dark on the stage. It, there wasn't enough front lighting. And um, again, I just wondered if you heard anything about that sort of thing. Uh, honestly, not. Although, you know, we did not have like a big front truss, you know, we didn't have that, but they had a lot of spotlights in front and uh, the towers were left and right. So they were getting the front edge of the stage. So, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I have no further comment. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So, so, so Mark, let's now fast forward uh, basically six years. From 1976, we're going to move to 1982, and this, this at least for me, and I'll let Tommy and Mark add their own adjectives. This was my holy shit moment. This yes. is the this is the elder tour stage for oh, everybody who's listening. You need to go watch this because we have some absolute amazing, never seen before 
sketches and drawings of the stage for Music from the Elder, dated 1982. Um, and and let's, let's dig into this. So, well, Michael, it's very important that you start in the correct month. Yes, yeah, so that, that's what I wanted. That, so timeline, Mark, you've got it listed. Kiss, like I'm looking at the very first image here, which is a sketch with a lighthouse and a ship's wheel. Um, oh, wait, wait, this, you, wait, wait, now you're, uh, the, first, the first sketch, the first drawing on this email is uh, is cars? Uh, yes, I, I, wa I want to I want to get to that in just a little bit because that's going to be its own <laughs> own little discussion following the elder stage here. Um, right, right. But so, do you recall when in 1982 they reached out to you to say we need to do another stage? Um, can you start doing something? What What was the timeline for you putting? the elder stage together you mean like what month did yeah I start? yeah when 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 were these drawn when was this being developed um i don't have them in front of me to like uh you know i, I have the email and stuff or the uh the pictures from jacques but uh to go through the notes i think it was uh jacques i, I think it was like in february but I, I i just don't know for sure that's very that, that's what jacques told me that's very important to the story i want everybody in our audience what he just said early 82 okay that's very just right. because this is a kiss podcast that's very important. That is a pivotal part of your story when it started. Now, that would have been February, you know, through April or so is when you were brought on board, correct? Um, well, February is before that. So I think, uh, you know, so I think I think I got contacted some, you know, sometime around then. I mean, I, I, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't have all, you know, all the papers in sure, front of me. Understood. I have them all now, but I think probably in some of the receipts, in one of the envelopes or whatever, you know, may have, uh, you know, dates like that. But yeah, no, I, you know, I was uh, contacted early on. Uh, had this had nothing to do with Jules Fisher. Now, this is them contacting me, and uh, uh, so okay, so I, you know, I go and, uh, um, you know, bring, uh, uh, you know, you know, bring my mind to the uh, situation and. Uh, uh, create something new for them, seeing, knowing where they've come from, and now I want to create something new for them. You know, take the same energy, but take it to a new place. And I was honestly, I was heartbroken when this thing didn't work out because you know I, I just had a whole new d dynamic for them, and uh, they just uh, yeah. I mean, I for 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 our listeners, not our viewers. The the images we're going to be putting in the in the in the podcast here for the elder stage, um, just imagine the de destroyer stage, but ramped up dramatically. The whole concept of themes and areas on the stages and everything else. This this really kind of took it to the extreme for sure. Um, yeah, and okay, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, do you recall when you when they contacted you? And you went and met with them to start this process. Was the band now involved, or was Gene and Paul immediately involved from the beginning with Bill Coin? Um, so again, it, it was Gene. Gene is the one that I saw when I had things to show, and uh, he said his first thing: "Okay, show me what are the what are the gimmicks? What are the gimmicks?" That was it. He looked at anything. What are the gimmicks? What are the gimmicks? What 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 did they get now? pre-hitting the record button, you were telling us you didn't even realize this was the, quote, elder tour. And one right. of the sketches actually um, in the bottom says, KISS, United States Tour. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a year. So right. did, what, what sort of information did Gene give you to say, um, okay, here's here's the theme. Here's the premise. Here's the story. Here's the whatever. What did he give you? None. He gave me nothing. He only looked at what I gave them to look at. He reacted to what I gave them to look at. Wow. So, so you, so all of this was designed without even knowing 
the album was the eld well but by this time that album was out so were you assuming it was going to be related to that album oh i had, I had no relationship to that album at all well, Honestly, did you see I, the current I, costumes at the time though were you aware of their their i don't know how dressing down their and, image uh, yeah yeah well I, I know they were looking for like a, a shot of adrenaline and uh um and so, you know, and, you know, so, you know, they were like, uh, you know, they had their different characters, but they're also like, you know, semi uh, heavy metal, if you will. Yeah. So, you know, so when I uh, started in on, on this uh, design, uh, I was trying, and, and that, you see that in some of Eric Carr's uh, design a little bit. Uh, I was into, okay, you want heavy metal? For me, there was no heavier metal than the dreadnoughts, the battleships. And so with the big rivets and stuff saying, you know, we're metal, we're steel. And so uh, that's what you see on the front of the drum riser here in Eric's. But, uh, you know, I was going to take that to a whole other level. And then when you have, uh, um, you know, for sound, uh, you know, it's like, you know, you want to blow out sound? Well, then take some, uh, uh, some uh, you know, some, turb some, some jet engines. And you, because you're always, like, relating the decibels to uh, you know a jet engine, so if you have some sound system or, or even prop or whatever that looks like a jet engine that you know breathes fire and smoke out the back and can look like it's making a lot of noise, you know you, I would think that's pretty exciting, you know, especially when you can rev up the jets of fire and smoke on cue. So uh, you know so that was nice for me. The whole dynamic of the stage, uh, you know, uh, you know. You know, pressing towards the audience, the the angles of the uh, trusses and stuff with the big uh, heads and horns up above. So I was into a new dimension, if you will, over here, and I it's was like really cool. pissed that it happened. <laughs> I, 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 I'm 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 really just kind of fascinated and in awe, I guess, now to learn that you created this literally with no premise of what the elder was about you know it's a concept oh. medieval concept album and and you just created a a next generation kiss tour uh, that that that's incredible right because i, I for me i created the the uh, first generation kiss tour and now i'm creating the generation that i want to see well if nobody's talking to me about what you know you know you know bring me ideas well, then these are my ideas. But there was no music involved. I didn't hear any music. I didn't hear about any album or anything like that. What are the, you know, so when I brought this variety of, uh, of imagery to uh, Gene, uh, you know, what are the gimmicks? What are the gimmicks? And that was it. Now, maybe it was just too much for them all together because uh, from what I understand, you know, uh, they went through a variety of changes, uh, you know, you know, after these designs were presented and it might have Monetary, it might have been personalities. I really don't know why they didn't go forward, honestly. Well, I mean, I mean, the, the the reality is that album, music from the Elder, which was released November was, November nineteen eighty one. So so uh, that's why this is fascinating, Michael. Yeah, because, that, because now what? the stage is being discussed and put together early eighty two. But that so Mark, for your your background, the Elder album was a phenomenal failure. Bomb. Oh. Didn't sell. It was it was just a huge catastrophe. I literally nearly almost sunk the band. So right. the the, the, whole, the whole idea of touring to support it was gone because they wouldn't have been able to go out and put on a production of this scale when right. everybody had basically said it's over for Kiss. Right, right. Um, yeah, well, no, there's, there's one part of the design that uh, that we've got, and Michael, you can show this design. Can you can you go back in your memory banks, Mark? And what's the wishing well? Yeah, thing? I was just going to bring that up. So there there's there's a sketch here that we'll put up where at the top it's got quote the well of the unknown, a fantasy yeah. well as dramatic device, a wishing well, fantasies emerging from the well. And it shows a wishing well on top of the stage with a trap door and steps underneath it. So 
what, yeah, to Mark's question, what was the premise behind that? Where did that come from? From uh, in my, my mind. I mean, you know, it, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's fantasy. And, uh, you know, so, you know, three or three, you throw a uh, coin in the wishing well sometimes, whatever. So, you know, here it is, the well of the unknown. Well, what's going to come out of that? There's a trap door underneath it. Anything could come out of that. That's a theatrical device. And so that would have been a beautiful theatrical device. That's almost and, Alice Cooper-ish. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be. But it could also have worked... Uh, you know, for either, uh, you know, Paul or Gene. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. it, it would have, it's certainly a, a new dimension and a twist. And, and I guess the part that I think KISS fans like me and, and a lot of the folks in our audience, this is the first time we're hearing that. We, we, we'd always heard as fans in, in history that there was supposed to be there was supposed to be a, 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 a movie with a script for The Elder because it was a concept album of medieval story and that they were going to tour on it. Well, we, we know a script was worked on but canned, and, and according to all of mythology that we know, the tour was nothing more than, hey, we, we, would, we had planned to do a tour, but it never got to the stage that we are actually seeing right now where sketches and ideas were put together and presented. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, just absolutely yeah, fascinating. Um, it is. You know, one, one, so another one of these sketches at the top has um, propeller power. Is, you know, right. what, what was, how were you going to use a giant ship's propeller on the stage, I I don't know, but it was like uh, you know it's a powerful uh, symbol. Uh, it's it's uh, metal, uh, but below that there is uh, the Kiss Temple. The, I was going to say now the Kiss Temple is just as interesting. A stylized design, um, yeah, of Egyptian. Um, yeah, if you so if are, you so realize, I guess so. Quick, 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 quick. So these are just you kind of putting your ideas on paper. It's not necessarily tied into anything. It's just the idea right. of, of the power of a propeller. Oh, the idea of a kiss temple. And you sure. present these ideas and hope some, you know, hope Gene goes, I love the temple. Let's build a temple. And then you focus yeah. on that. Okay. Okay. Got it. Well, Got yeah, it. sure. You give, you give them a menu. I mean, it's, this is how I would work with anybody. Uh, you know, David Bowie also, I mean, I would give him a whole, you know, initially the first time I worked with him, you know, like five pages of, uh, you know, uh, a, a variety of stuff. I like this. I like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. Same thing here. And, uh, you know, I did that for uh, uh, Whitney Houston. I, you know, I've done it for other, you know, other artists I've worked with. So, okay, because, yeah, you don't, you know, anyway, you don't, as a designer, I don't necessarily put all my, my eggs in one basket. But, uh, you know, initially, because you have a variety of thoughts. Well, what, you know, what is the client uh, into? Got so, it. you know, this, this gives me, you know, a chance to both express myself and, but here, if you know anything about uh, Greek architecture or whatever, uh, they have uh, you know something called a karyatid, which was a column, but the column was uh, sculpted as a human figure. Well, imagine Kiss Temple with the four figures of uh, of Kiss holding up uh, the temple. That's nice. Yeah, Boy, okay. some anyway. of that stuff would work now. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Yeah. that's a great <laughs> idea. So, so th this is sort of like the the a la carte menu you gave to Gene and you're hoping he goes, I'm in the mood for roast beef and potatoes and you take everything else away and now right. you focus on roast beef and potatoes. Totally, yeah, totally. Um, there, there's go, a down if, go, go ahead. If you go down more to drawing number 10, right? I was just going to go the, there. <laughs> okay, with the wrecking ball. Now, I had forgotten about this and then when I'm looking through the notes and stuff and I come across the orb... And then I'm looking at this and thinking, wow, and Trump and the, and the Saudi uh, king and everything, this is it, come to life. And I go, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, uh, again, the, 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 the kiss orb, a glowing orb with a voiceover right. of the inner voice. And, it, and, and the drawing you have has three members of kiss 
sort of standing around with their arms raised over this giant green right. orb. Um, right. It, it, it's crazy how these ideas were coming out of you on your own, but they oh, yeah. actually fit so well with the concept of the Elder album. Yeah, because any of this would have worked. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, when, when, when I come up with this stuff and I don't have the, you know, I don't get the chance to, like, make it, it's, like, uh, very disappointing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Talk, talk, talk about the image, the sketch of uh, the stage from the front with the lighthouse and the ship's wheel. Yeah, that's just another uh, variation of uh, the imagery and, and all. Uh, so, you know, so I you personally of the suck. Is that what song does that kind of go with uh, on the elder? I know. I'm trying to think right now. I can hear it. I Escape just from the island. No, 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 no. Who's the ship of the stormies? Exactly, exactly. Just a boy. I don't, I don't. Somebody will tell us because that's, yeah. that, that's what kids. But no, that do. that imagery of the boat and the wheel that goes hand in hand with the elder. That's what's so, you know, crazy. But but about. but but, but you, what what's crazy and now that it makes more sense is, then you get to these drawings where you've got the jet engines, which. That has nothing to do with the elder. You've got this giant right. metal frame over the drum riser that looks like a new industrialized cat. Um, but it works for creatures. It, it, well, yes. So now, now um, let's let's sort of get into this, which was my biggest holy shit moment. Again, pardon my French. The sketch you first brought up from Eric Carr. So, right. so you're submitting all of this a la carte stuff, and I'm assuming at some point in time Eric has seen some of these drawings, and he makes this drawing and he sends it back to you. Of no, the well, okay, I never, I don't recall ever getting this. I don't, re you know, I never met him, uh, and so uh, I had no communication. After I gave all these papers, uh, you know, to to either Bill Coin or Gene or whoever, you know, it was the last to have it. I never had. Uh, uh, I, this was like when I saw that mark. I, I took an idea. And, you know, I, I never saw that before. So so so, how did this get back to you then? Because the again, you've it, got to see the image. If you can't, if you're just listening, it's it's an image that is is so much the Creatures of the Night stage, mm -hmm. which happens yeah. a little bit later, but it's signed by Eric Carr, and at the bottom, it says, attention, Mark, I yeah, took yeah, the idea Mark, I, I took and added it to I yours. Think, yeah, yeah, I don't know where that's from, honestly. That's I mean, you know, I see, yeah, but I, I don't recall ever getting a, uh, you know, a sketch like this. It's, I don't have, I don't think I had, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I don't know where that came from. It, 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 it's, it's, so, it's so fascinating because it's got the, the thrusters that are from your sketches, um, the two thrusters. It's got the, the drum riser with the four giant guns, but right. he's added to the side caterpillar tracks, and he's basically right. turned it into a giant tank now right. again everybody stop and think about this this is the creatures of the night stage in the spring of 82 and yes and they and had the thrusters too the thr they didn't have the thrusters so imagine this sketch without the thrusters and only one gun coming out of the front so it was a single tank turret as opposed to your design is more of a a like you said, battleship. a, dread, a dreadnought, he... a battleship. Right. So, right. so, so, you know, obviously it got refined and simplized. Of they removed the thrusters, they removed three of the guns, but they made they made the the, the caterpillar tracks much bigger on each side of the stage. And this is the Creatures of the Night tour stage that Eric Carr sketched roughly together back when a elder tour was being thought about.
That's fascinating piece of KISS history and timeline right there. That we didn't know about. Then now we do. Right. I didn't know about it. Right. <laughs> well, you can only imagine, Mark, the three of us geeking out today when Jacques sent these pictures. And and when when you were talking to Jacques, whatever, a few weeks ago, he called me. He's like, Mark, you have to get Mark on your show. I, I cannot believe, you know, the incredible things that, you know, even people like us and people in our audience who are the most diehard of diehard fans. We did not know that the Creatures of the Night stage was just a proposal for an elder stage. And there's so many elements that you came up with that were later refined into what is arguably one of the greatest kiss stages. And when you talk to diehard fans, the Creatures tour and the it's it that's that holds yeah. a lot of weight. I, I was I was just going to say, Mark, you not only did you do the Destroyer stage, which has a special place in history and Kiss fans' hearts, the Creatures of the Night stage is arguably one of the best stages Kiss has ever done. It's so simple, but powerful, right. metal, brutal, in your face. Um, yeah. You know, it goes down in memory as. If you asked KISS fans what one tour did they not see that they wish they could have saw, almost everybody says the Creatures of the Night tour, which is, right, the, yeah, which, which is the tour that immediately followed what would have been the tour they had reached out to you to work on here. Right. Which was, yeah, about, what, what, which was literally what, Mark, a year later from when you were working on Well, it on started, this yeah, it started just before... Right. Uh, what December of eighty two? Eighty two, and went into early eighty three. Yep. So that's that's how come originally when we started talking about this elder stage, I I'm like, whoop, you know, pump the brakes here, make sure we all know the timeline here, and and if you think about it, the most fascinating thing about this, again, the elder is released in November of eighty one, so then you have the Christmas season. You know, you get involved, you know, February, March, April in that area. By then they know this this new album and everything Dead. look, everything is not working. And they obviously came to somebody like you who went and they went, you know what, we need something special. And man, you you freaking delivered. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know so I mean? it, it, it uh, yeah. you you don't realize it, Mark, but you designed with Eric Carr's obvious input and help, you designed the Creatures of the Night tour stage that they ended up using. Yeah. Without they owe me money, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, <wow>. Good <laughs> luck collecting it. <laughs> but, no, no, Mark, if you get a chance, uh, you know, maybe when we're done here, maybe Google the Creatures of the Night live photos and stuff. You'll start seeing a whole lot of you, your handiwork. You'll, you'll look at that stage and you'll go, oh my God, that's, that's rivets, I've, that's bolts, that's I've steel seen plates. That I've seen that. I've drawn that before. <laughs> uh, yes, this, this is the absolutely most fascinating part. Well, not the most, because the whole Elder stage is absolutely fascinating on its own. Because, again, we never knew it went this far. We never knew it had gone as far as sketches and discussions and, and ideas and then to learn that what was basically the Michael, failure, you're freezing up a lot. The failure of the elder led to creatures of the night. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, you don't succeed at first to try try again. Yeah. This <laughs> I, I I I mean again, I'm just I'm I I'm I'm speechless. This is just one of the coolest things we as KISS fans have come across in decades, decades to learn about. Well, on, on top of that, you know, out of all the stages we've seen, we've never even seen designs like, you know, the all seeing eye and, you know, the KISS temple and stuff like that just opens up a whole nother, I don't know, 
what if you know what i mean because we talk about that kind of stuff on the show all the time mark that that was just stuff i wouldn't even have thought about you know what i mean and it's cool that that kiss at one time kind of went through those ideas and we as fans had no idea that those were options and you can't help but going god that would have looked freaking cool yeah for me like uh you know like for for example the well of the unknown that's just not a prop or you know that's a whole story you could like uh, make a whole story around that and uh or the orb or or things like that those kind of elements for me uh you know that's just the start you know it's like a whole you can develop a lot of things out of that and even more than one thing out of you know for example you know the well of the unknown more than one thing could come out of that you know so you know it's it's like things like that you know i i get uh, i'm sorry that i didn't get a chance to uh you know, fulfill, uh, you know, my fantasy about this. And, and it, I, I'm sorry you couldn't either because, you know, when we talk, we as KISS fans talk about KISS tours over the over their career, one of the things that always comes up, and, and the three of us talked about this in relation to their newest tour, is we wish they did more themes related to their personalities on stage right. rather than just... It's a stage filled with amps and lights and lots of pyro. It's like right. that that's every band can do that. What sets Kiss apart are the four <clears throat> themes, the four characters, and why don't they do more stages built around the demon, a cat, a spaceman, a star child, a lover, whatever you want to call Paul. And well, they, they they don't. I mean, they did the Destroyer stage, which was a short tour. They did the creatures stage. And, well, that, that's what uh, I started to say, you know, at the beginning of our conversation. It's like um, I, I didn't look at them so much as a band, as an act, and uh, and so that's how all of the characters stuff evolved even more so. And uh, you know, so you know that that's where where all these you know the, you know these sketches and stuff come from. I'm thinking of them like that, and. Uh, you know, uh, because what are these things for? They're not for like uh, a band, you know. I mean, or like a, uh, you know, uh, j- just a band. Let it's not just way, for a lead you know? guitar it's player. For, it's, uh, for, you know, it's for a spaceman, Ace Fraley. Right, right, right. Now, now, yeah, a- okay. a- after all of that discussion with with Gene had gone back and forth related to. What was going to be the elder tour? Um, did you ever have any more conversations with the band anywhere else throughout their career? You're breaking up. You're breaking, Mike, you're up. breaking up really bad. Um, let's, is this any better? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. But it's the been moment. going on through the show at times. You've been freezing up. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, so, uh, but if it's uh, working on his end, that's well, what matters. Well, yeah, why did, did Mark Tommy, did you hear my question? No, no. Not okay. So, the question is after all of this, did you ever get contacted by Kiss about anything else in the future? Oh, no, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Because your 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 designs are just right in Kiss's wheelhouse. Yeah, no, I mean, I I, I love doing this stuff. I mean, I, I really do, and uh, especially the scale. And uh, yeah, no, I, I wish I had done you know more in my whole career so far. Yeah, I'm I'm ready to do it tonight today. <laughs> you know, really. <laughs> well, so so let's let's um, because we're 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 just over an hour now. Let's talk about why. Mark has shared all of these images and and what Jacques' involvement is. Um, Mark Cicchini, do you want do you want to kind of fill everybody in on yeah, the um, um backstage auctions, Jacques, my good buddy. Um, you guys you know I've talked about him many times on the show and he's even been a guest a couple times on the show. He's gonna be selling all of Mark's drawings or quite a quite a few of the things that you're seeing today uh, among other things um matter of fact the 
auction preview, I think, starts, and, and we'll get the exact dates, uh, I think starts around the 16th. That's the preview. The 12th. Um, the 12th. Is it the 12th? Okay. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, certainly, Mark, correct me here. And then um, the, when does the auction start? I know it ends on Sunday it, the 27th. The, I know that. The viewing is for uh, one week, and then the bidding is for a week. So the 19th is when the auction actually starts. Correct. And, and, yep. and listen, KISS fans. This is some holy grail stuff. Absolute holy grail. And you're going to have to beat Mark Cicchini to it. Oh, I right. Well, I mean, my, uh, I've the already got my... Uh, uh, the model uh, itself is, uh, there's only one, and that's it. And it's in good shape, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, a, you know, it's, it's a sculptural thing to look at. Because it's not in a proscenium. And, uh, you know, you can walk around it. You know, it's... Uh, it's well, I've got minutes. just the spot for it, Mark. I've got just the spot for it. <laughs> hey, one of the things I wanted to talk about, too, and, and this this has more to do with some of the paperwork that I believe he, he got that Jacques... Uh, you know, that's your paperwork, Mark. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, some of the paperwork you have... Um, uh, there's a budget for the very first tour and, and, and for some of the, the you know, the, 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 the design and how much things cost. But one of the things that really caught my eye um, was that on the elder tour that was coming up in the budget. Now, keep in mind, this is spring. I think the last thing, Mark, that I because this is paperwork that wasn't shared with us. This is just stuff I was talking to Jacques about. I think he said the last thing you signed off on was like May of 82. Now, that's like the only date he could, Jacques could give me. And I don't know exactly how accurate that is, but that works out right. If you were working, you know, February, providing sketches for a few months, you know, your involvement ending in May doesn't sound off. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with, with that said, Part of the budget, because there's budgeting details in the Elder Tour, which, you know, has separate to do with, you know, the designs that Mark was sharing, was lead guitarist, $2,000 a week, which tells me that Ace was already gone or they... They knew Ace wasn't going to be touring. Yes. Now, we know Ace didn't tour a year later for the Creatures of the Night Tour, but nobody know nobody up until now knew that as early as the first half of of nineteen eighty two timeline is everything. I Ace, said that the, the day I got the, here. the band already knew Ace was not going to be touring in support of the Elder, which also makes sense because they had to beg him to, to keep in mind. So the summer of eighty two, when they're recording creatures, he's not participating. Right. He's on the cover of the album by the fall of 82. And he does the European promo tour. And if you watch those videos, he clearly doesn't know the songs. You know, when they mimic uh, the, the I Love It Loud and Creatures of the Night and stuff, he clearly doesn't know the songs. So I just find it funny that pre-May of 1982, somebody in a coin management or whatever put in like we need a replacement guitarist and we're going to be paying them two grand a week again right. that's the fascinating part about collecting this sort of stuff and kiss's history is so freaking rich and we just hit a freaking oil well here with you uh mark <laughs> of the stuff that the diehards didn't know you know the, these people who eat live and breathe this stuff that we didn't know and it's just fascinating you know, all this stuff. And, and, and guys, you're going to have an opportunity to own some of this stuff. I mean, that's pretty, pretty incredible stuff. And, uh, you know, like we were just saying a moment ago, the, that uh, the auction preview starts in a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, then the, by the end of the month, by ho tell you what, by Halloween, you could have some of this stuff in your house. You, you, so, you, you uh, could have the destroyer stage in your house and using your McFarlane action figures to play with it. <laughs> 
that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> a little shot there. But. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mark, this is this is all, you know, again, we talked early before we hit the record button. Timeline is so important to all of this because especially the stuff you did for the elder is is a is a timeline for Kiss that there's just not there's a lot of holes in it. Because right, there was right. so much change happening in Kiss's world at that time. Ace Fra Eric Eric Carr is is fairly new to the band, replacing Peter Chris. Ace Fraley is gone. They're contempl they 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 the Elder Tour. They they change their makeup and costumes dramatically. Um, you know, record label is starting to threaten them with we're pulling the plug on you guys. You know, it it was like as as I said at the beginning, it was a a time where. It basically nearly sunk the band for good. So you've got stuff here that sort of helps historians paint the picture more accurately as to what was going on time-wise. So, yeah, no, I... uh, you know... Thank, thank you for for keeping all of this. First of all, yeah, that that is so <laughs> I don't know how many people are like, oh yeah, I had stuff. We threw it out. Don't have it anymore. It's like, oh, oh yeah, God. no, I could never do that. Yeah. So this this is absolutely amazing. And and as 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 Mark said, get over to the backstage auctions, and uh, on the twelfth, you can start previewing this. On the nineteenth, you can start bidding on this. Uh, I, I said it earlier, this is some stuff that, I don't know, for, for at least me, it's been decades since I've come across something that's made me literally go, holy crap, I have never seen this before when it comes, I've never even heard of rumors of it existing. So th this right. is some amazing stuff you have the opportunity to own. Yeah, yeah. those... Definitely, you know, one of a kind stuff here for sure. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't, Mark, Mark is so. Other than the auction, is there anything else you want to plug? Do you have a website? Do you have anything that you want to promote? Well, uh, yeah, I have a website, Mark Ravitz Art and Design. Spell it all out. And uh, I do. I, I must say that uh, I have an upcoming uh, uh, in uh, March in the Brooklyn Museum. They're going to be having a. Uh, a new show about Studio 54, and uh, I definitely work there, and they're going to have a, a bunch of my work uh, in that exhibit. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, definitely. Imagine yeah. the stories you can tell if you work there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you design anything in Studio 54? Yeah, I did, I did their big uh, Halloween parties. Wow! Did you do the uh, Did you do the mo moon that snorts coke and stuff? No, the moon. <laughs> oh, that's somebody else. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I'm uh, I've definitely been around over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect way to say it. Exactly, keeping it keeping it nice PG. That's that's the yeah. way to leave it yeah. for for that. Um, I, I I don't know, guys. Any other questions we want to dig into on any of the stuff we talked about? My gosh, we covered so much ground. Yeah, because we geeked out so much today, so we went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. That. Hey, Mark, Mark, as we like to say, we went total fanboy in this episode. <laughs> I hear it. Yeah, <laughs> we did. I mean, you know, we're we're all of us are in our fifties. We've been Kiss fans since the seventies, so you know, we we've we've seen it all. We've We've been around it all. Mark is a huge collector. I worked with the band for a number of years. Uh, to to wow us, this was pretty special. Hey, really quick, let's go back just for a second before we let him go, because we talked about Gene, we talked about Paul, we talked about Peter. You never really talked too much about Ace. What are you? What are your? Uh, he, he was a for me. He was like a loner. He he didn't really uh, talk to me much. I I didn't really. You know, I didn't really see him talk to any anybody much, and uh, he, uh, you know, he was off into his own like uh, world, and 
and that was it. I mean, you know, I, I don't have anything like bad to say. You know, there's nothing bad. It's just like I didn't just uh, didn't interact with him much. He didn't have, you know, uh, any input into what was going on. You know, like Paul and, and Gene did, and uh, you know, he uh, he was there to play his uh, music and do his riffs and stuff. And uh, I mean, he just his personality fit the space uh, cadet mode, and that was that. You know, I mean, he. You know, it, it's funny for me. It's like you know, I don't know if I'm like just you know uh, programmed like that now, but each of the guys that played those various characters fit them and uh you know it's like 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 it's like casting now they they did this by themselves before any bill of coin they created kiss themselves they created the characters themselves bill may have helped them extend it but you know they came up with this themselves so everybody like felt comfortable in their role to begin with and uh, so that makes for you know good music and and good uh, vibrations to start you know what happens with success? That's a whole other uh, um, uh, seasoning that uh, changes life. So uh, um, yeah, but to begin with, they created this, and this is theirs to start. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Mark, I just I need thank you so much. Yes. For, yes. For for making this stuff available to Jacques to auction off. And thank you for taking the time to talk with us and, and add your stories behind these documents because, uh, again, you know, at least it's, it's all documented now. This part yeah, of, no, this, this, this part of do the story is, is, is more complete thanks to you. Thank you. And best of luck with your auction. Thank Amen. you. <laughs> oh, people yes, will good know luck. about it. People will know. Yep. Th All right, good. Th thank thank you, Mark. Ravitt, thank Mark you, Mark. Mark Art and Design dot com. That's my website. Perfect. Please go visit it. Thank Mark thank for this. Be well. Thank you. Take care. I know. Total fanboy. I went total fanboy on this. I, again, I've said it twice. I don't, it's been decades since I came across something that totally made caught me by surprise and made me go, holy shit. And and I don't know about you guys, but actually, was, no, that's not true in the respect that we've had a few moments like that. This, well, we've, 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 we've had some cool moments, but this is stuff. This was stuff that no one ever knew. We didn't even know it existed. We, we, well, here's we the best. There, there wasn't even really rumors of it existing. There wasn't the oh, I hear a collector owns it, but it isn't sharing. This is again. This is like a, a pure discovery almost. Who who knew that G, that Gene looked at designs for uh, the well and for the Kiss Temple? These are things that were never even talked about. Right. Gene Gene right now could do could do an interview and go. You know, we we looked at some stuff that was you know like a temple and and you know an Egyptian motif before Hot in the Shade. You know what I mean? He now could. Say that, and you'd go, "Hey, all right, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. He's talking about Mark Raditz's designs." Now, here's the thing for me, because creatures was always supposed to invoke power and metal yep. and all that stuff. Did none of us, none of us knew that that came out of the Elder? Yeah, and 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 those Elder sketches, the full stage sketches he had. We're definitely invoking that as well. Very power, very metal, very heavy. Yeah. You know, jet thrust engines on stage, all this metal. It was just like, wow, even back in the think Elder. that was the reaction? Because by then they knew they were dead in the fucking water. Do you think at any time Gene said, we need big powerful because when they got a hold of him to design it i'm sure they had to go well what are you trying to project what do you you know what i mean what do you because that's what mark said he's like you know battleship big and then you know the the turbines yep. and the, you know what i mean because I, I that because that was the antithesis of of the elder was the total opposite, opposite of, of that everything. yeah yeah you know what i mean i mean could could so, you could you imagine 
that stage with with Kiss prancing around in their little costumes from the Elder? Fuck no. Fuck no. Wouldn't it, it, it wouldn't have worked. You know, Gene and his little ponytail and uh-uh. Uh-uh. Just wouldn't work. I I don't know. It's just the 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 gaps in timeline that have been filled in here. Are just huge, huge. I mean, Especially this period. The, the, we just found pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that we lost under the couch. We didn't. No, we didn't even <laughs> know we lost them. We didn't even yeah. know they were there. <laughs> you, you know, it, it it it's sort of like pulling out that pair of pants that have been in your closet for twenty years and sticking your hand in a pocket, and going, "Holy crap! There's a hundred dollar bill in there." <laughs> I mean, learning that that. Ace Fraley was out of the band as early as the beginning half of 1982. They yeah. knew he was not going to tour. That, that also works in the timeline, though, because uh, he didn't work on Killers. He didn't, you know, yep. work on. So that all makes sense. Yep. But yeah. to see it in black and white, like touring musician lead guitar, they didn't have a name, they had nothing. They're like, all we know is we got to offer somebody two grand a week. And you know what? That's, Back in 1982, that's that pretty. Huge. That's pretty good freaking money. money. Mm -hmm. Two grand a yeah. week. <laughs> well, he, again, you know, going back to the whole creatures thing, I always assumed that after creatures was done is when they went. You know what? We need a stage that matches the power and yep. might and what we're trying to. You know, from the drum sound on down. When lo and behold, it, it was the opposite. Um, yeah, yeah. They 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 had <laughs> that they had ba that back in the first half of 1982, thanks to Eric Carr. Mm -hmm. Eric Carr's ideas. Hold on, did Elder Eric Carr say kiss? Uh, he, 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 <laughs> I don't know, but it sure wasn't me. <laughs> he, he definitely <laughs> saved Creatures of the Night. It's all yeah. it's all the oh. Eric's credit. <laughs> no yeah. he, he's credited no now with the drum sound and the stage. Yeah, that's awesome. This is this is absolutely fascinating, people. Absolutely so, what should we do, what should we do for homework then? What was the what what was the thing that most blew your mind? Yeah, what what what, what made your mind explode? You like to have seen? What was that, Mark? Hmm? Which one of those ideas that went unused would you like to have seen? Or what piqued your what piqued your interest the most? Was it the well? Was it the turbines? Was it you know, was it the temple? What what would you have also too, what do you think would have worked with the elder? Because we clearly, the three of us, all agree that the the battleship and all that stuff wouldn't have worked. But had they toured small clubs, maybe that little temple with the all-seeing eye, maybe that would have worked. Although, um, let, let me, let me throw, something that's mystical in, in old world. But but let me let me throw in a huge what if. What if the the plans for a elder tour were, you know what we going into all of this design, we know our costumes aren't connecting, so if we're going to tour, we're going back to platforms and 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 our heavy metal costumes all of the creatures there there's a bit of timeline when did the creatures costumes first start materializing and being discussed we've we've, yeah. we've now learned that the stage itself was early 82 maybe remember, the costumes were back then too aces went unchanged by Ace, the, you know yep, what i mean yep all all the way up to the well, to the day he left and, and what if something would have happened out of the ordinary with the elder, say, in February or March, where all of a sudden one of the songs was picked up as a single, and all of a sudden the record started to sell? Would they have already been ready to go into um, the uh, studio for Creatures, or would they have then maybe played some El I mean, there's so many possibilities of how this could go. Well, I, I would imagine if, for some reason, a single took off, which meant the album took off, um, the label would have wanted them to go out and tour because back then right. you went out and toured to sell and support an album. So they would have they would have done a tour. How long it was and how extensive it is, whole nother question. Um, but I think we all agree they could have performed some of the elder songs in Creatures of the Night costumes. 
Yeah. Yeah, but if you go back and, and in real time, of course, timeline is everything. Platinum with Dynasty, gold with Unmasked, and I'm speaking just to the United States. Zippo for the freaking elder. Yep. That's why they, they just they didn't even, they couldn't get enough interest to tour, and they knew it. And, and yeah, and, and and as we know, basically the label pulled all support for that album the day the album was delivered, and they listened to it, and it was like this isn't going anywhere, and it was done. It was it was delivered DOA, dead yeah. on arrival. So you know the label was not going to do anything to even try and save it. It's like why why risk losing any more money? Let's just take our losses and. Regroup plus and... the turmoil, plus the turmoil within, and I remember there's a really great hit parade article where Paul just says shortly after the elder, look, we're going, we're going back in the studio, and we're going to make you know a heavy metal record. Yep, and they did, and and although to be fair, they did say that after Unmasked as well. I think they were stung by the gold. Yep, and matter of fact, the uh, guys, you have to go to YouTube to check it out. Because it's not the same song that's on The Elder. Um, Deadly Weapons is a great demo. And it's it's kind of formed the basis in some ways for the song that's on Asylum. That's on Asylum, right? Love, yeah. a Deadly Weapons. I think yeah. that's on Asylum. But anyways, there's a song that I'm kind of bummed they never released because it would have fit in great. And there's a really great demo of it on, on, on YouTube. Uh, Deadly Weapons. Uh, plural is the name of the song and it and it does share a bit of the course but it's slowed down it really sounds like the four songs on killers and i really wish they would have released it my point was that stuff was you know in their vocabulary at the time you know what i mean that's after the elder was done you know they started writing songs like that like you know what we really gotta actually i think in my one of the kiss geeks is gonna i think that actually was around right when they were doing the elder but they shelved it to do the elder project that, that whole timeline's kind of weird right in there but but again you know that's a great song and in in uh you know again i think most of the kiss army and i know you two guys feel the same way those songs on killers those four new songs were, were really good you know um they sound like kiss again you know yeah. what i mean and yep. and and it, uh, again, you know, it was just nice. You could really look back now, and especially adding in Mark's, you know, what he added in today, you can see the, you can now see the mindset, you know, starting to change. Like, we have to get back to what we do best. And say what you will, I mean, you know, uh, it, it took a while, but the Elder did go, or it's not Elder, the, you know, Creatures did go gold. It sold enough that they could at least tour. And like I said, uh, you know, a, a couple episodes back, I still think my big what if is if they would have said what they say now, meaning, you know, revisionist history going. Yeah, I, I think at the time they should have went back and, you know, did in stores, which they did do some. But I mean, in total, want to reintroduce themselves as the heavy metal kiss, the kiss yep. that you grew up and, and you loved. I, I still think the trajectory would have been different because. One of the things that, that really makes me feel good is something that we talked about earlier in this episode. Creatures of the Night is seen by most KISS fans. You can't say all, but most KISS fans see that as a high watermark musically. And I certainly feel that way. Music, I mu love musically and, and live. Yes, yes. Yep, yep. Uh, that's you know, when I uttered those infamous words in February of 1983. No Peter, no Ace, no problem. Uh, I, I know, loved that. Show. I love that record. Yes, so do I. And the tour and the stage and, uh, you know, Mark's the same way. I mean, in, in, in my heart, that tank stage holds a special place. And, and to learn today where that stage was birthed, basically, where, where it came from, is, is just huge. Because even when we had the, the artist who drew the tank for the tour book, he didn't know. No. You know, they built a stage based off of the drawing he did, but that was all a year earlier. A year earlier. I mean, Fascinating. again, for homework, what 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 part of this episode just made your head go? 
holy crap, your jaw dropped, your tongue drag across the floor, you going, I want to own that piece of, of memorabilia from the auction. Um, you know, and, and we're spending so much on the, the elder stuff here, but it's not to take away from the material from the destroyer stage. That model that he, he built, when I saw the pictures of it, I'm like, why isn't KISS making a model kit of this that we can build ourselves? I mean, it's, beaut it's a beautiful model. Beautiful. I mean, as Mark said, he knows where it's going to go in his house. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going big on that one, baby. Uh, you know, we, we, may, we may have an episode here in, in a couple months where Mark's <laughs> sharing all of the stuff from the auction. Oh, um, boy, I hope so. Because there's, this was, this was a special episode. What, what was the special part for you guys? And you know where to go. Facebook.com slash three sides of the coin. YouTube, Spreaker, Instagram, wherever. Leave your comments. Leave your homework. Um, yeah. What, what made you go holy shit? And I want you guys to realize just how geeky the three of us are. Well, Lisa's geeky too, but in a real hot way. But, but, but when we when we found out about Mark coming on, and I shared, you know, when I when I when I talked to Jacques with these guys, we we're like, oh my god, we could not wait oh, yeah. to share all our geekiness with you guys. We, because we, we we were super excited when when Jacques informed Mark that we could have Mark Rabbits on as a guest. We got super excited. But let me tell you guys. When Jacques just this morning sent over the photos, oh. that 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 super geeky excited went to the stratosphere. I mean, <laughs> Tom's uh, like Mark's gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you 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 remember when when I posted that that sketch of the tank stage from Eric Carr? I was just like, holy shit! I you know we we were just like, this is incredible. This stuff. My first thought of uh, my, butthead. <laughs> yeah. my first thought was of you, Mark. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I, I, I was like, Mar Mark's, Mark's gonna, crying. Mark's gonna <laughs> want gonna this for so much, yeah. so bad. Yeah. It's second mortgage time at, at the Chikini nope. house. <laughs> New dude, that's my best Canadian, and it's not real good. You no, know, he'll just sell off a bobcat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a I can, I can let one go. Hmm. Another Kiss cruise or an auction? <laughs> Oh, and I'm not, I'm not missing the Kiss crew. <laughs> Matter of fact, the crazy part about all this, it's kind of good for my finance. Well, good in a way, because I have to have everything financed. I'm going to be gone for two weeks. So I have to I always pay all my bills like a few weeks in advance. So this is going to be weird because the auction ends the 27th, which is a Saturday. Is it Sunday? Is it the 27th or is it the 20? Uh, let's see. It, it ends October. Because I'm leaving for Florida on the 29th. 26th is a Saturday. The so 20, 20, 27th is, is right. So it ends on the 27th. Because I'm leaving for Florida the, that Monday, the 28th, because the Kiss Cruise is that Wednesday. So I got to get my finances in order because if I'm going to bid on this stuff. Then I, you know, then it's and and of course, you know, I've, Jacques's been my bud for a long time. If I do win any of this stuff, I got to let him know I'm going to be out to sea and you know just hold my stuff there for a couple of weeks because I'm I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks um, when we go. So it's just going to be a real exciting time. You know what I mean? I'm really looking forward to this auction. I'm just looking forward to this auction for for one reason. Um, there's just some stuff I'd never seen before. Yeah. Or at least thought I'd ever even have a chance to own, and and that's real exciting, man. You know, it's not like it's like a poster that you've always wanted or something. This is stuff that I didn't even know existed. That's, you know what I mean? That's what makes this uh, people understand. And and maybe this is timeline because we've been here since the '70s with this band. But this is stuff that in. 40 plus years of being a fan and as I've said we've all run in the in the kiss circles and collecting circles for for decades this is what makes it holy shit that we never thought this stuff existed at all 
Now the scale model, there's a picture of that. We, yes. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, so I've seen I've seen it, but never like the photos we got today. You know, a different and, angle. And, and you know, you didn't know that it still existed, and it was in correct. Pristine you didn't know condition. if that was a photo from thirty years ago or whatever. And you know? and, and again, we knew all about the Kiss logo and all of that stuff. It's really when, you know, I remember when 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 Mark goes, oh, you know, this is the guy who did the Kiss logo. He did the Destroyer stage, and he did the Elder stage. And I'm like, what? <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't think that existed. Yes, it existed at least in drawings and discussions now, people. Never got any further. But just just remember, the death of the Elder gave birth to creatures. Thank you, God. Yes. Oh, thank you. And, and you know, what fascinates me more is all of the books that have been written by people in and around the band, nobody's ever talked about this stuff. They've always just sort of glanced over that era. Well, oh, it was the Elder, it failed, they were talked about a tour, it never happened. Boom, let's go on to Creatures. It, you know, that's why this is fascinating because now we finally were able to talk about that era and that moment. I mean, 1982, man, 1982, huge, huge, Huge time in history. Chaos. And it's, it's somewhat fascinating that it took them that long after an album was released in November of 81 to get around to talking about this. Right. Well, think about, again, go back. They were, they were doing the killer sec sessions, and then, then they did Creatures of the Night, and obviously Ace wasn't, you know, they, if they did do the tour, they're planning it without him. And then they, you know, think about this is the one part that really ties all this together with having Mark on today. So they knew Ace was gone as early as spring, or at least he couldn't tour. Or he was, you know what I mean? They, 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 the they, they knew Ace was going to have his car accident as early as <laughs> the first half of 1982. <laughs> well, well, think about it. He didn't play on the killer stuff. He didn't, you know, didn't participate for the most part in Creatures as far as, you know, Michael James Jackson said he maybe was around a little bit. But again, my point is he, he wasn't on the record and, you know, certainly not on Killers. Why then did they have to rush Vinny? In the fall of '82, I was just going to add, I was just going to bring that up. So, what if they knew that early that they needed a guitarist? Were they auditioning and looking for guitarists all of 1982, or why did they wait? Were they hoping that Ace was going to change his mind? They were going to be able to convince him to stay. I, I think they're hoping I think he'd that, stay. I think that's yep. what it is because we also know the record label contract that they just re-signed in 82 required three original members in the band. That's why Ace is on the cover of Creatures in an attempt to, quote, fool the record label that he's still in the band. If they went out and got a new guitar player in, in the summer of 1982, they risk having that, that big record contract screwed. God, I love Creatures talk. So exciting. It is. It is because it's the most mis not misunderstood, but just the most unknown era. With the we most filled in some holes in today. The, we filled in some holes today. A lot Major. of them. We filled a lot of holes today. See, there you go, people. We're hole fillers. <laughs> so so Mark, how many Kleenex did you have to use today? Oh, today was at least four. I was I, I was waxing it. <laughs> I was I, I was gonna say this was at least a box. This was a box oh, yeah. of Kleenex. Oh yeah. I was I I came from the stuff we were talking about earlier today. But uh yeah, just I tell you, it, it was just and, and boy, what a great guy Mark was. Just a, oh, a super a, I love the fact that you, you know, he remembered things and you know could talk in he clarity and he saved and he found the stuff. You know, th those are three things that a lot of people can't remember. Just can't do. They didn't save anything, or if they did save it, they have no idea where they saved it and can never find it again. This is and like, I, you know what's nice too, because look, we're all guilty of this with with Peter. It was nice that somebody. It's something nice to say about him because it yeah. doesn't happen a lot. 
And I mean that in a sincere, genuine way, you know, because at one time, and Paul Stanley alludes to this more than once, at one time it was one for all and all for one. And that had to suck to see that fall fall apart. apart. You know, so it was really nice that, you know, that that Mark brought that up. They, you know, that at one point, you know, he wasn't the the bad guy. He he was. They were all pulling in the same direction. It just seemed as soon as they got to the top of the mountain, a couple of them went, eh, "Fuck it," you know. Yeah. It's too bad. It's too bad because there's a great what if, and 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 we've talked about that more than a few times. You know, what if they would have stayed together? What if they would have got along like brothers? What if? No, we know but that. That's, we know, as you said, Kiss was saved by Ace and Peter leaving the band. <laughs> well, we certainly wouldn't be here today, would we? Yeah. Uh, this this is this is like a where this episode was like a warehouse fine without having to step foot into a warehouse. Amen. It's also uh, time to go find dinner. That is upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Liz poked her head. And and that's our cue, Tommy, to wrap it up. <laughs> We're done. Mark. All somebody. right, you guys. You know your homework. You know where to go. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this as much as we did because this was a great episode. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.